Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm going to talk you through the books that I read in January 2022. It would help if I actually had my list up on my phone. Um, also, I just burnt my... Why can't I think of the word? <laughs> Thumb on trying to curl my hair and that is what I get for trying to make an effort for once. Okay, the first one I read, we went off to a good start. Your Work Wellness Toolkit. I have been recommending this to everyone around me. Uh, it's written by Ellen M. Bard and was kindly gifted to me by Watkins. Uh, so you can see it's uncorrected proof. This came out on the 11th of yeah, 11th of January 2022. It is fantastic. It is practical and I think that anyone with a job, especially an office job, especially publishing, should get it. Why? Because it's got 100 practical tips in it to basically improve your mental well-being at work. So I started a new job recently, if you're not already aware of. I've loved it, genuinely. It's been hard, definitely, new job and all, but I didn't realise how much I was actually doing things wrong, basically. <laughs> Who'd have thought? But this made me realise, actually, Anna, get your shit together, because... <laughs> You're doing it all wrong. What is it? It's essentially a journal. So perfect for all the non-readers out there. It's basically got tips for managing relationships, man managing your need to be productive, managing your setup, everything. It's got tips in there. It's written, I'm pretty sure she's a, yeah, she's a psychologist, the author. So there's got loads of CBT in there, which is cognitive behavioral therapy, which I recognize from having therapy, but that there is still so much in there that I've learned and that I've taken away from. I actually started, I love a bit of writing. I love a bit of homework. So I got, um, so a new book and basically wrote down all of the tips that I have taken away from it and all the tasks that I want to try. And one of the things it sort of emphasizes at the end is don't try all of this at once, you know, try it bit by bit. But even though I have this kind of like written reminder of what I personally want to try, there are just some things that stuck in my head. So it's obviously non-fiction. It's more of like a mental well-being kind of book, but highly recommend. So we were off to a good start and we maintained that because I read Colleen Hoover. Uh, I read It Ends With Us in, must have been last month, December 2021. If you know, you know, you know, <laughs> you know? I basically put all of Colleen Hoover's books on my Amazon wishlist, sent it to my family, and my parents got me this for Christmas. Yes. 100% yes. Five star. Oh, let me get out my review. So I have started using Storygraph as well. I don't know if anyone else is using this. It's more of a new thing. Everyone used to be Goodreads, and I was a Goodreads what do you call it like worshipper i've changed story graph i love it love all the analytics and the pie charts and the the mood thing and everything i went into this not really knowing what it's about i'll be honest i, I immediately thought it was gonna be a romance like regretting you i regret getting with you on the synopsis on the blurb on the back it's actually about a mother regretting giving birth to her daughter not, not literally giving birth but regretting having her daughter brutal you don't get a lot from it and I think that's intentional the synopsis is supposed to be a little bit vague because quite near the beginning there's a plot twist which was weird didn't see it coming and so the whole story is basically about the consequences of that plot twist which obviously I can't speak about I said in my review the book heavily revolves around family relationship which I loved so although the book had a lot of plot the characters and their relationships also played a big part the narration shifts from Morgan who is the mother to Clara throughout his daughter a little bit of a criticism but I said the story is arguably a little unrealistic and it takes a few bizarre turns but enjoyable nonetheless Though I could understand Morgan's feelings, I'm still not convinced her actions were morally right. I loved the way Morgan tries to protect her daughter, Clara, though. Two quotes that I loved that I pulled from this book were Clara to Miller, her lover boy. One of these days, I'm going to be better for you. Cry. Clara goes through a lot of trauma and yet still blames herself and is eager for her relationship to work out, which is what that quote's about. Um, makes him feel basically a little bit sad for her, but grateful for Miller's response as a result. And then Morgan's the mother to Clara, the daughter. A person can't learn from someone they don't respect. <coughs> Loved, love, new Coho fan club joiner member. Um, oh, I don't have the next one. The next one I read was Margin Charge. Bit of a weird one. It's split into three sections. It's a kids book published by Piccadilly Press. I actually bought it ages ago from the works. Yeah, expect all like silly 
stupid things. It's basically about a new babysitter that comes around and goes crazy. The next one I read that I also don't have because I've given to a family friend is The Little Wooden Robot and the Log Princess, bit of a mouthful. This was Children's Foils Book of the Year and it's published by Templar, which is an imprint of Bonnie Books UK, which is where I work. I read it to see why was this uh, the book of the year for 2021 and it was really cute. The illustrations are chef's kiss and yeah, cool. The next ones I read Pip and Drip, which I'm working on, which are so cute. They are these life cycle books by the author called Maggie Lee. They're these cute little books by Templar. They are just, they're just cute. Like, how can I say it anymore? They're just simple, cute. But what's really cool about them is they've got like a, so one's called Pip, which is a seed, and one's called Drip, which is a water droplet. So say the water droplet, it's got that shape throughout the book and then that's a hole throughout, if that makes sense. Beaut. The next one I read was Sometimes I Feel, which is by Sarah Maycock. This came out January. It is the mini hardback edition of the book that's already out. So it's basically nicer for like a little bookshelf or just more of like a gifty edition. Um, it's got all these like stunning little illustrations in it and just like ex exploring big and small feelings. The next one I read was probably my favorite of the oh, I don't this was non-fiction and it was a bit of a different kind of vibe it was more of a journal i did really like regretting you but my favorite book of the month was how to kill your family by mella mackey Be mella mackey bella mackey yes yes weird but yes sorry I mean, there's no spoilers in terms of the author says from page one, yeah, I killed all of my family. And you're like, what the fuck? how do I even pick this? Okay, so I read it as an audiobook, first of all, let me point out, which potentially makes my experience a little bit different. Because I read some reviews after, so some people saying like, you know, it was slow paced, whereas I thought it was fast paced. So maybe that had uh, to do with it. But I was genuinely chuckling to myself because Bella knows how to write, okay? She knows how to write to make you laugh when you're sitting in the car on your own driving two and a half hours to Bournemouth. What is it about? It's literally about her and her family. She's in prison and she's like writing a diary entry on like detail of how she did all of these murders. It is about the murders, like obviously, but it's so much more than that. It's about like race, it's about class, it's about privilege, it's about society, it's about media, it's about crime. For me, it I interpret it as it's more the messages behind everything she's saying and the murders than the actual murders themselves. So like some people are like, oh it's like unrealistic. I'm like, well shut up, like you can still enjoy it even if it's unrealistic. It it's perfectly feasible. It could have happened. The main character, Grace, who has killed all of her family, she has developed that character so incredibly well that I feel like I know her, like she's my neighbour that I'm a bit scared of. She's basically, I, I did write a description of her. I said, Grace is many things, brutal, funny, satirical, isolated, emotionless, bitter, greedy, pessimistic, critical. All of this, yet entirely self-aware. She is all those things. Self-aware, I wanna point out that one as well because not only is she self-aware, her perceptions of all the other people around her were fantastic. Both obviously Bella who wrote the book and Grace like as the character I'm giving her credit because I just thought the, the book was so unique because Grace, she has an astounding perceptive of other people and like understanding their psychology, making assumptions and like really observant of their actions and why they're doing things. I just literally thought, you're, you're clever, you're clever. So I said it's addictive, funny, eye-opening, really well thought through. There are so many intricate details throughout. I almost pitied Grace and understood where she was coming from and her point of view. It never got dull for me. From the first sentence, every chapter was capturing. So well written and really enjoyable. 10 out of 10, loved it. I want to know what you think as well. Have you read it? I feel like I'm a bit late to the party. If you've read it, let me know and put your thoughts down below so I can argue with you because I thought it was good. And this is what, I kind of want to talk about this well because this is what kind of annoys me. Like I finished this book and was like, yes, we're ready to rave about it because I personally really enjoyed it, got a lot from it. And then I read some reviews that like weren't fantastic. And I was just like, it kind of got me and I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't be thinking it's like five star. Maybe I shouldn't, you know, be thinking it was really good. But then I was like, why am I being influenced by other people's reviews? Because surely that is exactly what reviews are for. It's for me to say, you know, I loved it personally. And then I was thinking like, they're going on to all these depths. And I was like, oh, I almost felt like bad, like guilty. I don't know if anyone else gets that. I feel like I need to just go with my gut. If I enjoyed something, then I enjoyed it. No matter if other people think it wasn't well written and if it was slow paced or whatever. Like at the end of the day, I enjoyed it. You've got a five star from me, like... Oh, my, uh, my eyelash is poking up. Oh, that's so annoying. 
I'm currently reading two books. I am reading Monster Donuts, Cyclops on a Mission, already 10 out of 10. I knew it was going to be 10 out of 10 because I read the first one, Monster Donuts. This is by Gianna Polero, illustrated by Sarah Horn. This is published by Piccadilly Press. The first book came out last year and this one came out just this month, January. Chef's Kiss, like, I don't know what it is about these books, but I just love it. Like, they're so genuinely funny. Like, even as an adult, I'm laughing along and liking it. It's literally about monsters that get destroyed by donuts. The main character, Grace, she is like a monster hunter. She has a bakery where she makes all these donuts and her and Mr. Harris have to work together to destroy the big guy. Yeah, so it's all about like quests, it's funny, it's silly. 10 out of 10. Uh, I haven't actually finished that yet, but it's gonna be 10 out of 10. And then what I'm also currently reading, but I'll be honest, I'm not like far into enough, is After the Rain by Lucy Dillon. This was kindly gifted to me by one of the imprints at Penguin Random House. Can we just appreciate this though? Little cover with the, yeah. Um, what's it about? It is about rain. It's about this flooding that's happened in this town. Um, so it's talking about uh, Tara, who's a therapist, and she's like dealing with other people coming in, saying what they thought about the floods and stuff. Her boyfriend's just like gone, and her dad has like come back in her life since she, for the first time since she was ten. So it's all about a few different things. At the moment, total honesty. I feel like I'm not totally in it just because I feel like I've been doing a million different things. I was listening to the How to Kill Your Family audio book, and I've still got a long way to go. So I'm gonna give it like a good chance. Um, because I really, really enjoy, like, the whole storyline plot behind it. They are all the books that I read in January 2022. Have you read any of them? Do you disagree with me? Are you going to watch some of my other book reviews? At this point, I don't know who's even watching these. My views have... I've said this on Twitter, but my reviews have been really bad at the moment. So, I'm talking to this camera, not knowing if anyone's actually going to be watching this. Please do. Please watch this. <laughs> so, yeah, go check out my other videos. I'll link everything down below and see you in my next one.